We turn now to the deadly mass shooting in Las Vegas. Senator Dianne Feinstein joins us from San Francisco. Senator, you're supporting a bill that would ban these bump fire stocks. Do you have any Republican support for that bill? We have Republican interest. I have nobody lined up. Uh, we have 38 co-sponsors. They're all Democratic. Uh, we've had individuals that have indicated an interest and particularly for a hearing. The NRA put out a statement on Thursday suggesting they would support looking into regulations that would keep these bump fire stocks from being sold. What did you make of that position? Well, I thought that's a step forward and it's, appreciate, it's appreciated. Regulations aren't going to do it. We need a law. It can't be changed by another president. Right now we're seeing one president change actions of a, of a president that came before him. And that would happen in this area. And I hope that Americans will step up and say, enough is enough, Congress do something. What do you make of the increased sales of bump fire stocks in the wake of the shooting and then yeah. now legislation? See, I don't know what to make of it. Um, what this event said, uh, th this is a well-to-do man. He wasn't mentally ill. Um, he wasn't a criminal. He wasn't a juvenile. He wasn't a gangbanger. And he was able to buy 40 weapons over a period of time, have 12 bump stocks, line them up, break through two windows in his hotel suite, and take aim at tens of thousands, well, I guess over a thousand people uh, at a concert. And this was such a cross section of America that it really struck at every one of us that this could happen to you, and we want to stop it. Could there have been any law passed that would have stopped him? No, um, he, he passed uh, background checks registering for handguns and other weapons uh, on multiple occasions. And one of the things that's been a part of this debate is some people right after this massacre called for more gun regulation, said something must be done, blamed the NRA. And what gun rights advocates heard is they heard that that call for something to be done, and what they, what they heard in that is people essentially saying, we want to ban semi-automatic weapons. Well, that's just plain wrong. Uh, this is written in clean English. You can take a look at it. I'll send a copy of it. It's a two-page bill. I'll send a copy of it to anyone who calls our office, and you can look at it yourself. It does not take anyone's gun. From the other side, those who would like to restrict guns in, in America, who hear a bill targeted, as you've described it, narrowly at this idea at, at bump fire stocks and say, the only way to stop this kind of uh, situation in America is to ban these kinds of semi-automatic weapons and weapons that can fire with rapidity. And anything short of that is insufficient. What do you say to those people? I agree with them to a great extent. What I don't, because I, as you know, I did the assault weapons legislation in 1993, which was law of the land for 10 years. So I believe, I mean, I've watched this thing from the Texas bell tower to today in schools, in businesses, in workplaces. No one is, appears to be safe anywhere. Let me ask you a question, uh, get your thoughts on another piece of legislation the NRA sure. has mentioned in, in, in response to this. Is shooting, they've talked about passing the concealed carry reciprocity, which essentially allows somebody who has a concealed carry permit in one state to carry it throughout all other states the way, say, a driver's license would work. What's your opinion of, of that bill, which is in the Senate? Well, my opinion of that bill is it's terrible. We want every American to feel comfortable packing a concealed weapon around the country. I represent 40 million Californians. And I can say without hesitation, Californians do not want concealed carry. If they say, though, that this is a right protected in by the Second Amendment of the Constitution, why is it uh, California who gets to deny people the exercise of that right? Well, I don't believe it is protected by the Constitution to conceal it without a permit. Well, in this case, they would say if you had a permit in one state, and then that permit would be honored by the other states, again, like to say the, the way a, a license would be for driving. I'm saying that the state I represent would not want any part of that, nor should any American. You just make the situation worse. You let somebody with a weapon who may do you harm get close to you. Let me, Why would you want that? 
Let me switch here to another uh, topic for you, which is the Senate Intelligence Committee work that you've been doing. Chairman Burr of that committee said that the question of collusion between the Russians trying to influence the election and the Trump campaign was still an open question. Is that because there's more disclosures that suggest it's a possibility or just because nothing's been found yet and it's an open question because there's no proof that it's happened? I think the latter. It's an open question because there's no proof yet that has happened. And I think that proof will likely come uh, with Mr. Mueller's investigation. Uh, he's got the ability to use a grand jury. He's got the ability to use the power of subpoena without question. And he's got the, the ability to do uh, a, 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 a criminal investigation. And that's what's going on, and I think that's where the information will come. What happens in a political body, and I am finding this as the ranking member on the Judiciary Committee, everything has to be negotiated with the party in power. And it's very difficult to do an investigation under those circumstances. Final question, Senator. Uh, the president is, is thinking about decertifying the Iranian nuclear deal, which means he would essentially kick it over to Congress and say, Congress, you can sanction Iran again uh, or add new sanctions, which would break the deal. Uh, if, if Congress did nothing, the deal would essentially remain intact. What do you think the appetite is in Congress for more sanctions uh, on Iran? Well, I'll tell you this, John. Uh, yesterday, or day before yesterday now, in uh, the Senate Judiciary Committee, we had a very complete intelligence briefing on Iran. There is no question but that Iran has complied with the strictures of the deal. And when either IAEA found something or anyone else found something, it was quickly remedied if there was a glitch. So they have cooperated, I think, 100%. The greatest ramification from this would be to really create a crisis with North Korea, because it would give North Korea reason to believe, well, nothing the Republicans do can you trust. When you have um, the United Kingdom, France, Germany, uh, Russia, uh, China, and the United States all agreeing to support something, and then the United States goes through an election, the new president pulls us out, what does that say? All right, Senator Feinstein, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, John.